I want to show you how you can use Goal Seek to calculate the internal rate of return in Excel. Now, I have to admit, I never thought of using Goal Seek to calculate IRR, and I have to thank my colleague for sort of bringing this to my attention. Now, actually, it makes a lot of sense because even though Excel has an IRR function, the way IRR is calculated in Excel or anywhere else is basically using the approach Goal Seek does, which is it keeps searching until it finds the right answer. So we know that net present value is equal to the present value of the cash flows minus the cost. The internal rate of return is the interest rate that makes the NPV equal to zero. So as I said before, we have a function here that will do this for us, and we can do that, and let's comp we'll compare it to what Goal Seek does. So here I'm just going to highlight these, and I get 38.16%. Now, Goal Seek can search and try different interest rates, and we'll try and find, or we'll find the value that meets the conditions you want. So first we have to put in the, the definition of NPV. So the definition of NPV here is going to be, we're going to use the NPV function. Well, the NPV function, as many of you may know, doesn't actually calculate NPV. It starts discounting the first cash flow. So if you put the cost in, it will discount that too, and it won't be correct. It actually calculates the present value of a series of uh, cash flows. So the rate is going to be right here where Goal Seek is. The values are going to be these cash flows. And then we're going to subtract out the cost. In this case, it's going to be negative because, in fact, um, we already have a negative number here, so we just have to add that here. So it turns out that this is going to be 1 million if the interest rate is zero. Now let's see what Goal Seek does. To get Goal Seek, we go to Data, and we go to What If Analysis, and Goal Seek is one of the choices. So we want to set cell, this cell here, uh, C15, we want to set it equal to zero because this is what we're trying to get. And we want to get that by changing the interest rate, which is right here. And if we hit OK, hopefully it's going to give us the same answer. And sure enough, it does. We can format that as, um, as a percentage and add a couple of decimal places. And you can see that we get exactly the same answer. What it does is it, it searches. That's how IRR is calculated. It's not calculated algebraically because this is a nonlinear equation. So it just keeps trying different numbers. And that's exactly what the IRR function does. So let me show you one other case here. So these are conventional cash flows where you have the cost is negative in time period zero, and then you have positive values. Now, you can also have these non-conventional cash flows where, for example, it's negative to begin with and then you get some positive cash flows and that becomes negative again, right? The sign switches more than once. Why would this happen? Well, this might be the case of building of strip mining, for example. You know, there's a cost to setting it up. You do your strip mining, you get the minerals, but before you leave, the government requires that you plant trees and bring the, um, the area back to what it was before. Or for example, if you had a nuclear power plant, when you decide to close the nuclear power plant, you can't just close the doors and leave. You have waste you have to dispose of, and it has to be disposed of in a certain manner, and there's going to be a cost involved. Well, it turns out when you have these non-conventional cash flows, you'll get more than one internal rate of return. And in fact, you can see that by 
plotting the NPV profile here. So this is the NPV for different interest rates. And let's see what we get here. So if we use the IRR function, and this is the problem not just with the IRR function, but also with goal seek. So we put these values in here. And let's just expand the decimal places. And it's 10.11%. So right here is one place where it is um, equal to zero. But there's also another place over here. And that's a problem. Okay, goal seek doesn't actually solve this problem. But actually, when you do IRR, most of the time, we just put the values in. We can also put in a guess. So if we put in a guess of, you know, 5%, we're going to get that 10.11 again. But over here, this is around 40-some percent, 42%, I believe. If we were to start at a different number, so equals IRR, and we put the values in, and let's say we make our guess 40%, it'll start guessing and it'll find this value over here. Let's see what goal seek actually does for us. So let's put in the NPV function, NPV, okay, here's the interest rate, the cash flows, and then we're going to add back in this negative cost or subtract out the cost. And let's let Goal Seek do this and let's see what Goal Seek comes up with. So again, we go to data, what if, Goal Seek, and we want to set this cell equal to a value of zero by changing the interest rate, which is right here. And it turns out that it gives us the 10.11% that we got um, originally. But the problem here is that it only gives you one value, which is the same thing as the IRR function. In the case of the IRR function, you can at least put in a guess to have it start somewhere else. So the only way to actually find both of these is to um, actually, or the best way is to plot this NPV profile in order to um, determine where you should start. And once you know that you want to start, let's say, at a higher interest rate, and we could have started at 50, and it would have found this because that's much closer than it is to 10.11, but the problem here, I guess, with Goal Seek is it doesn't seem to have some place where you can begin your guess. But the upside of using the Goal Seek, func seek function is that you can, it allows you to understand what the IRR function is doing. Okay, all too often we plug in numbers into a function and we get an answer. We don't actually know where it comes from. Where Goal Seek is actually searching and trying to find a value so that, in this case, our NPV is equal to zero. So I, help, I hope that uh, looking at the IRR function along with Goal Seek gives you a little better understanding of how um, the IRR function works and that you can, in fact, use Goal Seek, but also a shortcoming of Goal Seek because it, like the IRR function, only gives you one value and you're not able to tell it to start someplace else so that you can find that other value, in this case, 42.66%.